Hello everyone and welcome to another episode in my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode I want to send the return vehicle to the moon. So the vehicle that is going to bring the Kerbal back from the moon, I want to get that in orbit around the moon this time. But I also want to fix up our lander a bit. I've decided to add two mods. Uh, first of all, ScanSat, which I thought I already had in here but I didn't. So I added that in and then procedural parts and with procedural parts I think we can fix up our lander a little bit better so it's not so heavy uh, in particular those I-beams that are being used to carry both the uh, lander legs and the fuel tanks uh, and also those particular tanks themselves are not ideal so I want to fix that up and uh, get a little bit of a better situation with those so that's uh, that's part of the plan and so the first thing I want to do is get the procedural parts unlocked as much as possible. We've got procedural SRB. The uh, procedural parts and stretchy tanks to the best of my knowledge work together fine uh, and here's ScanSat. The only question is whether procedural parts will like the fact that I have the wrong version of module manager installed. Um, the version of module manager that all these mods run on right now uh, the versions that I have is uh, 2.0.7 and I believe the the oldest version of uh, procedural parts that I had uh, uses 2.1.0 and the one that I installed uses 2.1.5 so yeah a little bit of an issue there okay uh, procedural stack decoupler. Now you remember in the previous episode I talked about how the stack decoupler, the decoupler that we had on there might have been too heavy and so we'll take a look at that. Procedural RCS tank, very helpful. And, no, this one more. Uh, procedural structural element, one of my favorites. Now, I don't know if we have the part that I actually wanted. Uh, but I guess we'll wait to find out. What I wanted was uh, procedural, uh, what you call it, uh, thrust plate. A procedural thrust plate. And if I can find it here, I'll unlock that technology right away. Unless I just missed it and I've re unlocked it. Possibly. So we've got a thousand signs as well. Now I would like better solar panels, but this isn't really a huge improvement over what we've got. What we really need is the really big ones. We don't need new batteries. Uh, we aren't into key things just yet, though. Maybe on uh, I have plans. The reason why I made sure to install ScanSat is because the return vehicle is going to scan for locations on the moon and we're probably going to attach our key thing detector to it as well so that's part of the plan if I can get enough electric charge on it um, so annoying to have the service module here but not the actual module hmm. but yeah that's too much science Okay, uh, I'm going to try and get more science. That's what I'm going to do with the science that we've got. So we're going to unlock this one. And maybe we'll, we'll think about what we can do with that even in this episode. Okay, to the VAB. Okay, so here we are with the lander prototype 2. And I wanted to take a look at what the mass of that decoupler was. It's, uh, it's this one. A 0.18. I wonder what uh, was... Uh, maybe it was just a tank? No, that's only point one, uh, point oh 0.07, just about. Uh, how about these radial rockets? Are they really heavy or something? No, tiny. Um, batteries shouldn't be very heavy. I don't know, maybe all the little fiddly bits added together end up being a lot. We really don't need that one. Okay, uh, you know what? Uh, since everything uh, 
It used the problem I had before was because the command pod was the main part. I think maybe if I put the command pod in here right now, it should be fine. So let me try that theory out for a sec, because uh, uh, it might be helpful. Let me dump the instruments for now. Uh, if they'll let me. That sort of works, but we need to have some sort of cone at the top then. Now, if uh, the usual situation holds... Oh, I like that they have the mass of them written on there. Um, I should actually probably flip this around. Actually, you know what? Even if I do that, I don't think this is going to eject with enough force. But, at least it'll give us uh, sort of a chance to get it off. Sort of a weird assemblage at the top there. We'll put our parachutes on the side. Like so. Though wow, the parachutes are really heavy, aren't they? Point four. What the heck is up with these parachutes? Now, without the thrust plate, I can't really fix this whole situation. What I can do, of course, is add Okay, so here it says all the tanks are full. Now I just loaded up the craft file. I didn't uh, fix this or anything. So yeah, according to this, all the tanks are full. So maybe I just didn't have enough fuel? Could sort of fix that. This thing probably is not going to be able to do the trick. This is not enough. So, I'm going to get the return vehicle all set up, but this this is not working out sufficiently well. I think we're going to have to do some more work on this, and perhaps increase the capacity of this launcher. Okay, so let's turn to the, to the return vehicle. Now the first thing we need to test is whether we can have a remote control unit and the empty pod at the same time. I've uh, brought the lander prototype. We're going to call this, uh, uh, well, well, we can't really call it command module. Return vehicle. It's fine. Okay. So first thing, I have to make sure that Jeb does not sneak into the pod. And now I am going to attempt to bring out the launch pad and see if I can control it. Okay, so the first thing, time delay is good. Um, plenty of electric charge. So we've got the time delay. I can do SAS and I can throttle up. Alright, so it was only a problem if the command pod was the first part added. That's a strange thing, but okay. Uh, I guess we'll go with that. It it has to be uh, remote controlled when it's sent over to the moon anyway, so this is critical. And looks like we're good to go. I just realized something. I don't need parachutes on the lander. The lander isn't going to return and re-enter the atmosphere and do all the stuff. In fact, if I could get rid of its ablative shielding, I would. Uh, actually, I think ablative shielding is tweakable here, but it doesn't actually produce any... Oh, it does. Okay, I think we can do some stuff with the lander action. Uh, that, that's pretty good. Okay, so things are looking up for us, folks, but let's get this done first. Now, we've probably got one day's worth of food, water, and oxygen in this, and that's good for the re absolute last bit of it. But now we can, I think, add a life support tank to the service module. I hope. That's a battery. No, I guess we don't have the life support tanks yet. Uh, that's a shame. Okay. So. So we'll have to find another way to attach our... No, I think they could probably sneak in under here somehow. Well, actually... Maybe we could add it to this portion. A little bit dodgy, I know, but... Now, the logical engine to use for this will be this one. 
but no. <laughs> that is for a different vehicle altogether. Uh, the Apollo service module engine is way too big. We really don't need anything particularly efficient, honestly. Uh, what we would like, however, is something light. That looks about... well, that trust weight... well, I haven't filled this tank up yet. Yeah, that's about right. Wow, 4,000 though. They can really get around, can't it? Okay, right, science. And... Minimum altitude, max altitude 500. Yeah, we'll get within 500 kilometers, alright. So let's slap one of those on. Uh... I don't see why we need both of these. I haven't used ScanSat much, and you're going to notice that. I think this is a general, generally important unit, so we'll... Hopefully it won't... Uh, you know what? Hmm... There's a lot of stuff sticking out here. I know what I can do. This ways. Ah, we haven't seen that sort of thing before, have we? No, no, we haven't. This still sticks out quite a lot, no matter how far down I move it. I'll try and move it down as much as possible. Probably will still stick out. Well, let's see how... well, this this could expand a little bit more. Let's see how it looks. Um, conic fairings we'll need. Ooh. Do we have a different color? Huh, I thought we... that, uh... Elizabeth Hall came with different colored ones. Let's just take a look at how these are. Worse. <laughs> uh, this strikes me as a little bit of a problem. But I have a solution. Yes, yes I do. And voila! I dubbed this the two tank solution. And now, this will not stick out. Uh, I need the center of mass here. Ah, uh, that's too high. Ah, uh, that's because we didn't fill this up with fuel yet. Start retracted. How the heck do you start retracted? You can start a command pod retracted. Start deployed. Beats me. Um, I see available volume here, so we can put RCS here. Uh, but I don't see the right RCS. <laughs> I guess I'll have to skip that. Because if I configure these ports to one thing... Oh, and there's something I forgot too. If I configure these ports to one thing and that to something else, that's not going to work out. But... That's that start retracted thing. That's got me confused. And uh, these are clearly wrong. I mean, no MMH and two or four for this one. Okay, so we've got. We could move that up a bit. Or maybe not. Uh, obviously, putting RCS on the command module would have been helpful, but. This is looking pretty serious now, isn't it? Sort of. 
Now we need some serious power. You can see the drain is 0.99, a whole unit of drain. Don't need to sneak anything. Okay, so what I wanted to do before I forget was in making all of this happen and tucking the whole thing into a fairing was to be able to add food. Just two small light support cans will do. But that'll be nice and neat for us. Well, as long as we deploy this antenna before we deploy the solar panels, it'll be fine. That could have some problem. Okay, and finally, some scientific instruments. Uh, we really don't need a seismometer on this thing. Ooh, but we could have carried the Science Junior. This is a little bit packed right now though, honestly. Let's just uh, make sure we're focusing on our mission. I think we've got quite a lot going on here. Let's action group the critical antenna. Okay, just barely making it. But it's all tucked in there. Okay. Now, obviously, we have a lot of staging concerns. I think we're pretty confident that the return vehicle has plenty of Delta V to get us back. We could probably even attach the lander to it and re return both of them, but... Okay, so... It's a little bit sticking out there. Okay, so if I... Is there anything I've forgotten on the checklist? We've checked the solar power. We've made sure that the RCS ports are configured to MMHN204, which is what the what we've got in there. Um, we know that the SS engine doesn't require anything special for ignition. We've got the uh, retro boosters. We've got staging correct as far as I can see. Uh, we have dispense with that, we've got parachutes even, shockingly enough. Uh, we wanted some science, but it's not entirely clear that we're going to have the opportunity to do anything new, so that's pretty much covered. Alright, uh, let's send this off to the moon, and then we'll be one step closer to being able to do a uh, proper moon landing. At least we'll definitely have the ability to get them home, get the Kerbal home, once we have brought the Kerbal back safely into orbit. So, okay, uh, well this has to be empty, so no Jeb, and let's take it out to the launch pad. Okay, not bad estimation from map view, 7 degrees, and right now we can time warp. Don't know what exactly decides well, we can or not, but... Uh, very wiggly. That's part of the problem that we've been having. This is this is close enough. I can adjust uh, 1.4 degrees. Okay, so let's get this uh, over to the moon. Throttle up, so that works. Remember, without uh, Kerbal in, it was a little bit... Uh, weird because of the order of the parts but yeah 700 tons plenty of fuel to get there and back so yeah and off we go So yeah, uh, getting rid of the ablative shielding and the parachutes from the lander will save a huge amount of mass. And that huge amount of mass will probably make the difference. I think that'll help a lot.
Now, whatever else uh, point two four might do, I mean, it'll give more room for mods, obviously. But uh, from what I understand, it's not going to really help performance that much. And I, I do have performance issues on my poor little computer here, which is not really built for gaming at all. Uh, in fact, it's much more suited to processing video, uh, though it's not uh, great at that. But, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out a way to optimize that if I'm going to add a lot of more mods and up the visual impact, which I hope to do. I should make the top cone darker. I mean, just because the pot is darker, all the battery stuff is dark, uh, having the white cone just doesn't make any sense. But anyway, that's for future endeavors. I think because the payload is very light, I've ended up putting it into a very high orbit and our apoapsis is getting a little bit out of hand. I'm even tilting a little bit below the horizon right now and it's still not helping, but I'm reluctant to do anything more about it. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to keep burning until our periapsis is safe. And that's good enough. Okay, so a bit of a eccentric orbit. Probably because we've we are a little bit light for this rocket, and yeah, but our inclination is good, and we can certainly make a maneuver. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with this 224 with the trajectory out. Uh, I think it's because I plotted the. This sort of trajectory that I got, I had a pretty substantial burn to get into orbit around the moon on the previous mission. And uh, obviously uh, coming in front of the moon will actually uh, reduce the amount of orbital burn you have to do to get into orbit around the moon. However, I am not short on fuel. Not in the slightest. So, so not worried about that. That will be not a problem. Now, orientation-wise, I think I think we can uh, manage this. Uh, we'll we'll just dump the second stage. I don't think we really need it right now. Okay, leaving this one free. Let's drift it a little bit. Gotta tell Smart ASS to slowly get us over into the right direction and the tiny little reaction wheel on the top of the capsule will probably help out with that. Will this decouple when I decouple the fairings? Maybe. Oh, I forgot how I attached it. I think maybe the, when I decouple the fairings, this whole thing will detach. Uh, so I'm going to hold off on that for now. Forget if that's this is that sort of situation. Once we've turned in the right direction, I'll wait the 51 minutes and then we will make our translunar injection and then we'll be on our way. No particular worry about electric charge while we wait. Okay, so here we go. Uh, very stable on the engine. That's nice. And we will want that to stage first. In the dark, unfortunately, but you can't have everything in this business. 
I'm just gonna activate it here. Plenty of Delta V, 5,770. Almost embarrassing. Um, burn time, probably now we should go. Alright. We are drifting away from our maneuver node. So once again, this engine isn't gimbling properly. What a strange little engine. It just decides to gimbal when it wants to. Obviously Smart ASS is being told to gimbal. Got to turn on RCS. It's inside the fairing obviously, but at least it'll keep us stable. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm still unsure about this engine and the situation of uh, regarding its gimbling. It seems to be very, very inconsistent. Ooh, oh, are we going to have one of those little situ- Oh my god. Uh, RCS is not really able to handle this very well. Um, I'm shutting off the engine. Okay, RCS, can you get us over to the right place? This will take some of the Delta V out of our... Uh, okay, delete on close. I have to remember to click that. Yeah, so this will take some Delta V out of our our return vessel. That's a little bit worrisome, but we had a lot of it. A lot more than I think we need. Though, you know, the need to slow down around Earth is sometimes important. Don't want to make our re-entry too harsh. I don't know if 250 units of a blade... it's still deviating. It's still deviating. I've got RCS on trying to stabilize and it's still moving away from the from the marker. I mean this didn't happen with the previous mission. I had RCS there, I had the reaction wheel too, and but now we've got this going on. Unfathomable. Uh, and it's getting worse. It's getting worse. <sighs> Crying out loud. We don't have that many ignitions on this. We have uh, six more. We've got enough liquid fuel and oxidizer to deal with those six. I can't throttle the engine, so I can't say, hey, just uh, burn burn halfway. Maybe you're just being a little bit too forceful. The RCS is clearly working, I mean, as far as it can. And we aren't even uh, partway through with the burn yet. Just want to make sure we're controlling from there. We're burning a heck of a lot of our RCS in order to keep this even this stable, which is not stable at all. Uh, this is horrendous. What is going wrong? We are going to get this to the moon, I swear, but 
I don't know how much fuel we'll have left in the top at this rate. We're going to let uh, let the reaction wheel stabilize it. I don't want to use any more of the MMH and 204. Uh, actually, uh, this calls for time warp trick since somebody is messing with me as far as this is concerned. I'll do some physics back at them. I don't know why there should be a problem. This is not a stage that is new. We haven't adjusted it in any way. It's, uh, yes the payload's light, but it's not that light. Uh, let's see, Delta V stats. I mean, we're talking about a 7 ton payload. On a, on a 10 ton capacity. And the rest of the rocket worked just fine, of course. I mean, considering how empty the third stage actually gets, after all, it, uh, it varies by more than three tons anyway, so it shouldn't be unstable. Only how many more relights? Five more. Oh, here goes nothing. Just point straight. Crikey. Maybe I should lock the gimbal on it. Doesn't seem like that's the right thing to do, but... I'm gonna take manual. Ah, that's what I can do. Let me free the gimbal and take manual control. Nope, not helping. Take RCS now. So maybe at least my control will avoid the oscillations that Smart ASS was having. I'm not gonna save us much fuel though. Yeah, I think I can adjust better than Smart ASS to this. Maybe it was Smart ASS's fault, in fact. Uh, let me let go of it first. No, it's drifting. Mm, relatively stable. SAS seems to be able to ha handle it. Thanks to some use of uh, MMHN204 right here. Yeah, I, I guess Smart ASS in particular was having trouble handling this. Though clearly the real culprit is the fact that the engine gimbling doesn't seem to be very consistent. We are we have freed the freed the gimbal right now, and yet it's still burning MMHN204 to keep us stable. Okay. Uh, let's hold off on that. Let's see what we need to do to fix this. Hmm. You know what, uh, seems like if we point in the right direction, uh, the Ullage rocket would be the best thing to use to do this burn. I'll, I'll let uh, Smart ASS at least point us in the right direction initially. 
Let me see now. Eight meters per second. That's actually too much. Hmm. Oh no. Go away. Maybe I'll just use RCS then. Though we're getting to the point where I need to be conserving that a little bit. I'm going to jettison one of the fairings. See what's going on in here. Well, really, let's see what uh, RCS can do for us. Since the the little solid rocket boosters actually have too much juice, 8 meters per second will probably throw us way off. This isn't particularly the best uh, periapsis anyway. So, probably need some fine adjustment. Okay, I'm going to take Smart ESS off so it doesn't start wandering with the maneuver node. And, let's see. Don't really want it too low. Okay, that will do. It looks like we have about 2,470 left in our our return vehicle, Delta V that is. And electric charge four days worth. If we don't extend any panels, let's get out into the sunlight and see what we can do about that. We also need to extend the longer range antenna. Okay, yes. Okay, I see where the dish is, so I'm going to jettison this fairing. Yeah, this one. Again, I'm afraid of losing all of this if I try and discard all the fairings, so we're just going to do it piecemeal like this for now. Got to activate antenna, and I'm going to have the target be Kerbin Slash Earth. Okay, that's fine. Now we obviously need some more solar energy, and I'm just going to extend the panels on the side that is open. Looks a bit weird. But that's better than losing potential Delta V. The camera is... let me see. Let's go to free camera. Well, that gives you a better idea of the situation. Yes, strange, but functional. And uh, very functional, in fact, as far as the battery. Well, I'll keep it out, this concern. So, uh, I think we are all situated for a good trip to the moon. So I'll catch you on the other side. Okay, so somehow we ended up with a crash course at the moon. Maybe the decoupling of the fairings ended up doing that. I don't know. I certainly didn't add any thrust to the situation, but... Okay, we can fix this. We want an inclination around the moon, by the way. Obviously, we've got scanners. We want to preserve some sort of inclination, if possible. And even if we don't have an inclination, we'll have to get our engine to give one to us. We have to be below 250, obviously, and uh, preferably below 100 kilometers in altitude. In the end, what I really needed but don't have is that RCS pack that I put on the previous mission. Of course, I didn't save that with the sub-assembly, but uh, we don't have the RCS on this stage that we had on that uh, mission. 
Yeah, that's that was different. But it seems like I uh, the situation with this engine can be stabilized with as long as I don't use smart ASS. It's very complicated. Uh, I don't know what's going on with some of these things sometimes. Thankfully, we did did have quite a lot of RCS with us, uh, though that is actually draining our payload. Now, what do I do? Our, our rocket is very unstable. So relighting, probably not the best idea. I don't think I need both sets of these. We'll just use this one one more time to get into orbit. I believe. So... I mean, unless we want to use it here. Yeah, okay, let me start by using the solid rocket boosters. Uh, I don't know what staging that was. Have to wait the 1.25 seconds. Let's press spacebar again. Okay. Okay, a little bit high, but that'll do. 125 kilometers. Okay. I think we can be satisfied with that. Uh, retrograde now would be fine. Okay, here we are. Connection is good. We are currently around the time when we can burn for orbit around the moon. Not too far off. Fuel flow is stable. So everything is good. Our inclination is substantial, so that means that everything between these two latitudes can be covered by any possible landing. And uh, even though it makes uh, departure a little bit harder, uh, I think that'll be alright actually, uh, with the kind of fuel that we still have left in the, in the return module. So, let's get into orbit. Uh, okay, wait, wait, SAS off, uh, no, ASS off, SAS on, right, good. Oh, by the way, the engine is gimbling now, look. So, this engine only gimbals around the moon. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Um, go figure. Well, what can I say? I mean, I obviously don't have RCS on or anything like that, so it is controlling itself now. Very convenient, suddenly. Okay. Hold on, I don't want my periapsis getting too low. Let me replot this. Another burn at periapsis would be best. We can at least trust uh, Smart ASS to slowly get us over to Maneuver Node. And we still have a relight on this engine, so we might as well use it. We've got two relights, in fact. Okay, and a final burn for orbit here, and engine is stable. Okay, that's very good. Right, let's get into the light before we decouple anything. Okay, here we are, and I think even though we've got quite a bit of fuel left here, uh, we we should probably dump it. In the time that we're going to be hanging out around the moon, 
uh, a lot of it will boil away anyway, and it doesn't matter because one relight, probably, let's just not rely on that. So, let's discard that stage. First I'm gonna see whether decoupling these two fairings really would have decoupled the entire vessel. I've sent the message. And yes it did. Okay, so good thing we didn't do that earlier. Let me uh, activate RCS and push us away. Right. Let's get the rest of the solar panels out. It'll take a second for it to respond. I'm not using the action group because of course it's toggle and so half of them would go down when the other half extended. Okay, that's all of them. And so now we have many possible things to do with this. We can scan for Keythane, we can scan for uh, Scansat, but I'm not going to do that in this episode. We will leave that for another time. So, with our little return vehicle safely in orbit around the moon with 2400 Delta V, which should be enough to bring uh, Kerbals back to Earth, um, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.